Good day. Welcome back to Mike's Radio Repair and Restoration. If you're enjoying the content on this channel, please take a moment to subscribe. It would greatly help us by building our community. We could uh, really appreciate your help if you would subscribe. Um, if you are new to uh, restoring old radios or you'd like to begin restoring old radios, you've kind of come to the right place. Um, it's a great hobby. Um, it's great to collect. It's great to restore. Um, it's great to curate this old nostalgia. I have put together a system that you can learn to restore radios. It comes in steps. And if you follow these steps, you can be relatively sure of success. Every single one of the restores that I'll do here on YouTube will follow these steps. Um, and once you kind of sort of get into the rhythm, it starts to become easy to get these done. Um, so let's just very quickly take a, an overview of uh, some of these steps. Um, we'll go into them in detail a little bit more later on. Okay, just before we begin, I want to point out I've got a couple of other videos for the new folks out there um, that you might want to take a peek at. One of them is affordable tools and test equipment, uh, which is very handy. Um, and another one is identifying capacitors. And the next one is uh, basic receiver theory. Uh, before you jump into restoring, you should kind of sort of digest some of that stuff. Don't be afraid to ask questions. Um, I'll do my best to answer them. So let's go on. Um, I've got a five-step program laid out here to restoring old radios. Um, it's really rather simple. Um, you're going to be very surprised at how simple it is when you get through your first one. So step one here is initial inspection and assessment. And the idea of this is to great, create a go-no-go no go result. You've got an old radio. You don't know if you can restore it because of if it's got missing or damaged parts or another problem. So we try to eliminate that in this step. So we look for missing parts and damaged parts. The general condition of the radio. We look at corrosion. We look at the band switches to make sure that they seem okay. Um, check tubes is optional. If you've got access to a tube tester, um, okay, so be it. You can check it. If not, um, we can go ahead and restore it anyways. Uh, if we catch a bad tube at the end of the restore, well, we'll catch it in operation. Uh, but checking tubes is an optional thing. Um, we're going to check the power transformer. There's usually uh, two or three voltages on the power transformer, so we're going to check them all to make sure the power transformer is okay. And at the end of this step, we should have a, a go, no go result. So then, once we get through that, we can move on to step two. Step two is what I call the power supply. We're going to replace the power cord with a computer-type cord. Uh, you can cut the end off. Or something with the third uh, ground pin terminal. Three terminal, uh, uh, three pin plug is needed to ground the chassis. We're going to add a fuse on the hot lead and we're going to make sure the hot lead runs through the switch before it gets to the transformer. We're going to replace the power supply electrolytic ca filter capacitors and we're going to check and replace the power resistors as needed. Power resistors, you can almost identify them visually because they're rather large. They're uh, uh, rated at 5, 10, 15, 20 watts, whatever the case may be, um, depending upon what you're installing. They're fairly easy to locate and they're pretty easy to check. Uh, we were built around the base of the audio tube at this time. You might say, well, gee, that's not power supply. It's not, but it, I group it in here because it's got a, an electrolytic cap as well. So I go through the base of the audio tube, uh, check, take the tube out, replace the electrolytic capacitor, and check all the resistors and replaces are needed. So that gets step two done. That's pretty simple and straightforward to do. Step three is we're going to replace all the wax paper capacitors. And again, my video is uh, in this channel. It's uh, uh, learning to identify capacitors if you're, if you're new to this game. But this is it. Replace the wax paper cap caps one at a time. Don't run around cutting more than one out at once. Cut them out one at a time. Replace them one at a time. Make sure that you've 
got them installed where they belong. So that's really simple, that step. Just time consuming. So step four is also fairly easy. Um, we're going to check all the resistors and place those, replace those that are out of range. And once we get through doing all of the steps above, while the chassis is out of its case, we're going to have its first startup, which is kind of exciting. And if we get a radio at that point, well, we're going to go on to step four. And if we don't have a radio, we'll have to do a little bit of troubleshooting. But usually, I would have to say probably 95% of the time, the radio starts up right out of the bat. So step five is really clean up and finish up, where we clean up the chassis, replace the dial cords, service the variable cap capacitors, clean up the case, do what we need to do to make it look pretty. Uh, if it's wood, maybe refinish. Um, if it's paint, certainly a, a scrub up, a wash up, maybe a, a, a touch up. The dial, bezels, windows, clean up or replacement. And then once we get it back in the case, we can do the final alignment. So that's the simplicity of my five steps. And as I had mentioned before, all of the radios that I'll do on this channel will use these five steps that you can, uh, you can follow along. You can watch these steps in action. I just finished restoring this S40 using these steps. And it's all on YouTube. Um, I've put a link in the description below to a playlist where you can watch all of the five steps um, in action, if you will. And you'll find out that, sure enough, it's a logical way for a new person to start out and, uh, and get going on the hobby. Um, you know, continue to watch and subscribe our channels. We've got up many other great radios coming up in the next few months. Um, you're familiar with the S40 that I just finished up and that we use the five steps on. Now, here now, I've got an S40B that also has to be done and a couple of other Halicrafter receivers like a, an SX43 um, and uh, an SX99, an S20R. Uh, also, later on, I've got a couple of Johnson's Viking products, a, a Ranger transmitter for a couple of little touch-ups and a, uh, a Viking 2 uh, that needs some uh, extended help. Um, that we're going to get that going as well. So again, please subscribe. We could help use the help building our community. And until the next time, we'll see you again.